This story, I never intended to read this out loud. It wasn't written that way, and that's exactly why I'm reading it. Do something different that I'm not comfortable with. So we'll see how it goes. If you guys hate it, don't tell me. This is called With Friends. It's on page 81 if you want to read along. Sarah came back into the room with drinks and a smile that said she just heard bad news. The radio in the kitchen was still playing something jazzy and it carried over into the living room. I bobbed my foot with the beat and watched Sarah sit down in the chair across from us. She wasn't wearing shoes and her legs went on like brush strokes until they tapered into slender painted toes. Her second toe was longer than the others and it was green while the others were blue. I really liked that. My wife reached for her vodka. It left a distorted ring on the glass coffee table and Pauline swept it toward the corner in a long, thin streak. She brought the vodka to the precipice of her lips and took a delicate sip. She never touched the glass much. It always seemed to float just beyond the reach of her extended lower lip. Sarah stirred and looked out the window. The sun had disappeared behind the building across the street, but the heat of the afternoon was still sealed in the room like a thin fog. I wondered for an instant if it was the heat or the liquor that made the details of everything in the room vague and blurred. Just as quickly I realized I didn't care. I fumbled with the top button of my shirt, watching the slow, circular motions of Sarah's feet. She went for a scotch. That was Bill on the phone again. He's in traffic, she said. Bill had called twice already. Both times Sarah came back into the room with a variation of the same excuse, delivered to us apologetically through too wide a smile. I didn't mind. Actually, I liked it better that way. Seeing Sarah without Bill made things easier for me. It meant that I didn't have to be so careful about keeping my eyes off of her. Pauline wiped the bottom of her sweating vodka glass on the leg of her jeans and returned it to a dry section of the table. I knew later on when we get home, I'd hear something about the necessity of coasters. Oh, it's fine, Pauline said. I hate to make you guys wait. Really, it's fine. She was wearing a comfort smile. Don't worry about it. Pauline is the kind of person who likes to tell people not to worry. Usually I can't stand people like her. Maybe that makes me a little insensitive. People typically like to hear Pauline's comforting words. She's young and pretty, and at the end of the day, we have nothing in common, but that's what I like most about her. You could say I'm lucky to have her. Sarah is pretty, too. You should know that. Sarah's pretty in the way women want to be when they're older, elegant and in possession of a sort of relaxed energy that Pauline can only struggle to imitate. She's also a practiced and proficient drunk. We play in the same league, she and I. I watched Sarah as she and Pauline talked. They worked together at the hospital and spoke to the charged, rapid jargon of co-workers, that exclusive language no outsider can truly appreciate. I heard something about hours and payroll and a new intern, followed by forced, girlish laughter. In the street outside, someone was honking repeatedly, adding their throaty mechanical burps to the sounds of the city at rush hour. I sipped at my drink. So Jake, Sarah said, her eyes returning to me from their journey to the dark window. So Sarah, let's talk about you, my least favorite subject. What are you working on? No, I shook my head to emphasize the response. No, what? I don't want to talk about my writing. He never wants to talk about it, Pauline said. She reached for her vodka. I have my reasons. Sarah sat back in her chair and folded one leg over the other. She smiled and brought the scotch to her lips where she let it linger before taking one long, slow sip. I read your book the other day, she said, after a silent moment had passed. Which one? The first one, I think. Ah, from my salad days. It was buried on Bill's shelf. You should have left it there. He's joking, Pauline said, putting her hand on my arm. She sounded like a mother apologizing for her disobedient son. He loves that book. Please. I love nothing. I brought the tumbler up to eye level and held it against the light. The scotch trembled in my shaky hand and bounced the light around the walls of the glass. Out of the corner of my eye, I could see Pauline watching me, waiting for me to qualify what I'd said. She could keep waiting. I emptied the scotch and smacked my lips. Sarah smiled at us, fascinated. Her eyes darted between Pauline and me like she was witnessing the slow, violent eruption of a distant volcano. I stood up, pushing myself off the couch. I could feel my head shift on my shoulders, falling forward and rolling back until finally it settled. Standing up after hours spent sitting down is the drunk's biggest challenge, but years of practice made me perfect. I clutched at my empty glass. That's all I'm